Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rondell Booker, and I'm a member of Families for Safer Streets. First, I would like to offer my deepest condolences to the families of Patience Heaven Albert and Payson Lott. This is a club no one would ever want to join, not in your wildest dreams. Losing a loved one in a crash is unimaginable. Traffic violence is an epidemic which has become too common in this country, this city, and sadly in neighborhoods just like East New York that are not getting their fair share of Vision Zero solutions. Children on their way to school with so much life left to live, so much hope and potential, and in a split second their lives were brutally cut short by reckless drivers. <laughs> My sister Hermanda faced the same fate. On January 3rd, 2017, my sister was tragically struck and killed not far from here by not one, but two reckless drivers, one of which was a school bus operator. She was killed on a known dangerous street that hadn't yet seen street safety measures in place. She was a New York City public school special education teacher, headed to work on the first day back from Christmas break. Her book bag filled with treats for her seventh grade students. She was so excited to see them and hear about all they had done over their break. She never made it to work as she was killed a few blocks from our family's home while walking to the bus stop. Her death has left a deep void in the hearts of our family and her friends and all who knew her. She was such an inspiration to everyone she came in contact with, overcoming all obstacles she faced from being an immigrant migrating to this country as a young girl to being a first-generation college graduate with honors. My sister loved life, was a hard worker, and had so much left to do. She never got to start a family, get married, or travel the world, things she spoke of often. She wanted to change the world one student at a time. My sister's life was important. Patients and Payson's lives were important. Traffic-related deaths and serious injuries are preventable. If we just designed our streets putting people first and not cars, and made sure proven safety measures are not just in the city's fancier neighborhoods, but all neighborhoods, patients, Peyton, my sister, and so many others would still be with us. Not one more family should have to bury a loved one in a preventable traffic crash. Mayor de Blasio has the resources and power to end traffic violence. Why is he not here in East New York with us today? Why has he once again failed this community? Vision Zero needs to be a priority in every New York City neighborhood. Today, I stand with my fellow Family for Safer Streets members who have lost their children, parents, siblings, and spouses, or have been seriously injured themselves. Together, we call on, on the mayor to prioritize Vision Zero. We demand he make a big investment in this now heartbroken community to prevent these senseless deaths. Thank you everyone for coming out to join us in this fight and show support to these two families who now have to plan the funerals for their children. <coughs> Next, we will have a speaker, uh, Dulce Canton of Transportation Alternatives. Okay, Bishop Maldonado of 75th Clergy Council. Uh, can you please step forward to give a prayer for us? Good afternoon and God bless. East New York is mourning. I tell the mayor that his vision zero is not working here in East New York. He needs to bring his vision here and pay the crossing guards more money in order to protect our future, which are the children. Let's have a moment of silence. Amen. Heavenly Father, at this moment in time, we come to you with our hearts in our hands, asking you to take care of our community. Put the angels on each corner, protect the future, protect our seniors, protect the children, and protect each and every one of us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. We would like uh, Senator Prasad to come to the mic and say a few words. I 
I'm Senator Roxanne Prasad, representing the 19th Senatorial District. Patient hating equals pedestrian. Just remember, the two P's equals pedestrian. We must invest in the lives of our pedestrians. Too often, our drivers are too reckless. It is, people are too much of a rush to get somewhere without understanding that the lives of our children are our most precious commodity. The city has to do better. Everyone has to do better. Pedestrians' lives matter. And we must not have these two kids' lives be in vain. It starts now that we do the redesign of our streets. We should not have another vigil for two children killed in our streets because of dangerous drivers. Thank you very much. Councilwoman Annette Barron, who two days with, for us, with us, sat grieving, comforting, breaking down over the deaths of these two young people. I am the Vice President of Brookdale Hospital, but I want to say something. I work in this community. This is my home. But where I live, I have two speed bumps on one block. Where I live, there are crossing guards at every corner. The mayor talked about a tale of two cities while he was running. We can't be the second tale of that. And what we do ask of him is to put the resources into this community. Have the crossing guards, have the speed bumps. I spoke to Lika Samuels after this tragedy and I said, there needs to be a bill where we put sensors on bus, school buses so that when they're turning, they, they hear an alarm knowing that their kid's there. So I ask you on behalf of our family at Brookdale to support these families who have lost because we are all one, and I stand in solidarity with them. Thank you for having us. Now we'd have uh, Kashif Edwards come to the podium. Kashif, Kashif Hussein, I'm sorry. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kashi Hussain. I'm the Deputy Public Advocate for Infrastructure and Environmental Justice, representing New York City Public Advocate Jamani Williams. Thank you, Families for Safe Street, Transportation Alternative, Council Member Ines Barron, University City, Brookdale Hospital, the elected officials, the community leaders, and the community members for coming out to advocate and highlight the urgency and importance of our streets and pedestrian safety citywide. Within 48 hours of each other, we lost two beautiful children, Patience Evan Albert and Payson Lott, who were killed on unsafe streets in East New York, an underserved neighborhood from the angle of looking at infrastructure. We're seeing more young people, especially those from communities of color, are being killed on our streets due to traffic violence happening across our nation. And New York City is no different. There is an urgent need for our city officials and agencies to prioritize street improvements, especially in neighborhoods like East New York and other neighborhoods of color. Improvements in neighborhoods of color are not only a matter of the safety, but a racial justice. We must protect the city's most vulnerable population and do a better job of both outreach and investment. Since last year, 39 pedestrians have been killed, 3,656 injured in the borough of Brooklyn. And the neighborhoods like Flatbush, Brownville, Brownville, Brownsville, excuse me, and East New York, five pedestrians are killed and 654 injured. 
here we are again, offering solace to another torn family and attending yet another vigil. Traffic violence is the leading cause of death for children across our nation and disproportionately killing and injuring people of color. The mayor has the power and the resources to push Vision Zero to prioritize neighborhoods like East New York and others like it. Investing in more traffic safety measures in timely manner could have prevented these tragedies. It is highly recommended that when it comes to street projects outreach, New York City DOT go above and beyond just providing a workshop and presenting to the community board. The DOT should meet them where they're at. That's churches, that's mosques, that's temples, synagogues, community centers, shopping, uh, shopping car corridors, the local events, and provide opportunities for input beyond one-off weeknight events. Yes, we can do all better, but what we must all do better. Thank you. To hear from Danny Harris, the Executive Director of Transportation Alternatives. Good afternoon, everybody. I am honored to stand here on behalf of Transportation Alternatives, Families for Safe Streets, and most importantly, as a parent. Two young children who uh, I, I'm scared for every day when I walk them to school. This is not the way that any city, especially this city, should be. This is a city where we should prioritize our children, our most vulnerable, especially in the communities that need it the most, like here in East New York, over cars. We know the answer, the way to make our streets safer for everybody. Our city, our mayor has the cure, and he continues to withhold it from our city, including the communities that need it the most. We have to fight every single day as an organization and as activists to do what our leaders should be providing for us every single day. Today, hundreds of us stand here in East New York. Yesterday, hundreds of us stood at the end of Queens Boulevard begging our city to protect us. We are asking that as children, as the elderly, as those with limited abilities, and as everybody who is standing here, it doesn't matter what you look like, what neighborhood you are from, how old you are, when you cross the street and an SUV comes speeding at you, you are all the same. We are all human, we are flesh and blood, and when we are hit, as sadly too many of us here have been or experienced, I myself am a traffic survivor and I bless I'm blessed every day that I can stand with you, and I know that too many people here are not. We demand that our leaders take this public health crisis seriously. We demand that we don't have to do this again and again, and that we have to show up here in six weeks and in six months or in six years to get our city to do what they know is right and what they have within their fingertips to do. Mr. Mayor, you have said that you want to save our city. Here we are. We stand here because two beautiful children lost their lives in preventable crashes. Please don't force us to come out here again, and again, and again, and again, hundreds of times a year for all of the people who die unnecessarily in the city. I thank you all for being here. We should never have to be here. But together we do not hope and we do not pray, we fight. And we fought yesterday, and we fight today, and we will continue to fight tomorrow until we get to Vision Zero. Thank you. I hear from Wilfredo Florentino, who's a community advocate for this neighborhood. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Wilfredo Florentino, and I am the chairman of the Transportation Committee of this Community Board. New York City and the Department of Transportation have been willfully negligent. They have failed our community time and time again. Our demands for action on our streets have fallen on deaf ears. The accident that occurred on Crescent Street only a few days ago, right before that accident, there had been a request in July of 2019, which was denied by the Department of Transportation. They had all of the evidence, but unfortunately they failed us again. We cannot afford in this community not one more injury, not one more death. We have seen enough death already. 
We demand answers and action. We are asking on the mayor and the Department of Transportation to come out to our community, to walk our community with us. And we will accept nothing less. Thank you so much. We are heartbroken. Repeat after me. Repeat after me. We are heartbroken. We are heartbroken. Our children deserve better. Our children deserve better. All lives matter. All lives matter. Safer streets for all neighborhoods. Safer streets for all neighborhoods. All right. Um, next, we would like uh, Jamila Fines. Is Jamila still here? No? She's coming around. Oh, she's coming. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Jamila Fines. I'm from the Mayor's Office of Community Affairs and just here to share our condolences. We are very sorry about what has happened. Um, I know that we have been in close communication with the family, some of the community leaders and electeds, and we're going to continue to work to see what we can do to help move things in a better trajectory for everyone here today. So thank you. That's President's five minutes away, so I just want to... Oh, he's here! Perfect. Raise your signs high. This is not a group that we want to keep growing. It is enough already. Enough. And that enough. is why we are here today. And it's with such a privilege to, to welcome the Brooklyn Borough President, who's been a leader on this issue, who knows that every neighborhood deserves better than what we have been given here in East New York, that two children two children close in age to the age of my son, they deserved better. So it is my honor to invite up the Brooklyn Borough President. Thank you, thank, thank all of you, particularly those families, families for a safe streets. So many times we have joined together to move this conversation and not just in how do we talk about this, why do we make some real changes. And one of the primary concerns that we're having, when you do a real analysis of the investment the city has made in street redesigns to make our streets safer, it's clearly that there is a failure to go to communities like the Brownsville, the East New York, the South Jamaica, Queens, the South Bronx, that must stop. And urgencies cannot happen merely when we are in affluent parts of the city. Undeserved communities, underserved communities should not have a lack of proper street redesign. That's why these families are here. And you don't mourn any differently. When you look and do a profile of the families who are here, of different neighborhoods, different communities, you don't mourn differently if you're from Williamsburg or Brownsville or East New York. You mourn the same when you lose a loved one. The same body of people stood with us in Park Slope when children were killed, in Greenpoint, in Brownsville, in Bed-Stuy. We're seeing this far too often. It is unimaginable. In a three-day period, we lost two children going to school. Think about that for a moment. And then when you overlay that with the fact that when you look at how we have attempted to reshape this city to have safer streets, it's easy for anyone to see we have left communities like this off the table. And we have to ask ourselves why. Why have we ignored corners like this? Why do we fail to have crossing guards at every school? My significant other is a school principal and she stated that it was a daily battle to get a school crossing guard at different locations in underserved communities. Where is the same urgency? Children are children and they cannot be treated any different based on where they are growing up. And that's why we're here today. I have a son. It is unimaginable to have that knock at the door to tell them after you dropped them off or sent them to school that they would not be coming home. 
Just think about that. These faces are real that are here. The stories are real. And we are united on making our streets safe for all pedestrians. This must be a wake-up call if we have not felt the wake-up call after so many incidents. We have to turn this pain into purpose and have a purposeful way of ensuring that our children are safe and our families are safe. We don't want to benchmark our communities by ghost bikes and candles and murals of how we lost people to vehicle crashes. We have to do more. And I want to thank all of you from families from safe streets. I want to thank those of you who have come out time and time again to move this city to a safe place. As all of you have personally experienced this pain, you know this pain all too familiar. And it's more than those who are part of the fatalities. It's more than the loss of life. It is the countless number of accidents. It's the countless number of people who are hit. The countless number of people who are traumatized over incidents like this. The city must come and immediately look at how do we redesign this community to make it a safer place as we have done and invested in other parts of the city. It's an indictment on our city agencies that this was not done enough. And again, I want to thank all who have come out here. Our hearts go out to the family members, two children. Mothers are not supposed to bury their children. Dads are not supposed to bury their children. This is something that should not be happening. Thank you. All right, repeat after me. We are heartbroken. We are heartbroken. Safer streets for all neighborhoods. Safer streets for all neighborhoods. We are heartbroken. We are heartbroken. Safer streets for all neighborhoods. Safer streets for all neighborhoods. Vision zero in 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 all neighborhoods. We are heartbroken. We are heartbroken. Safer streets for all neighborhoods. Safer streets for all neighborhoods. Today, to support this cause, um, hopefully our mayor will have something to say about all of this. Any questions? We'll take any questions. Mr. Borough President, as you know, the BOT did in fact do a traffic calming design a couple of years ago on Blake Avenue. Obviously, the, the problem though becomes speeding car drivers. What's really the solution? Is it really re-engineering every street or is it to get fewer cars and fewer frustrated, fast, reckless car drivers on our street? Well, oh, several years ago when I was in the State Senate, uh, we were part of the team that pushed for the first uh, decrease in speed limits. Uh, laws on the books that are not properly enforced is a useless law. Uh, we pushed and thanked for uh, Andrew Granadas and other state senators that pushed forward uh, the speed camera bill. Uh, we need to continue to implement more speed cameras. And the police department must aggressively enforce the speed limits. We have to stop of people believing that it is the order of the day to drive faster and to drive fast. Everyone can't be in the rush, in, the, in a rush. And so proper enforcement can send the right message that we have to slow down. Uh, clearly, you can't see children uh, crossing the street if you're driving fast, if you're turning fast. Left-hand turns, right-hand turns can be extremely uh, dangerous. We see what's happening when trucks uh, strike innocent people and state they're unaware after striking them. Uh, we have to be more conscious. Distracting driving is a serious uh, problem. And until we do proper enforcement, we're not going to get the response that we're looking for. We have to do more enforcement in this area. Mr. Adams, besides the speeding, in New York City there's a law where a car is allowed to turn while somebody's crossing the street. Is that something that will be taken care of? 
you always supposed to yield to pedestrians. So I, I don't know what law that is, but that's not well, a like law. in other countries. They don't have a law where a car can turn while a pedestrian is uh, walking. It's usually they have to come to a stop. It's not a law. Well, I, 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 but let me say say this. Nothing should be taken off the table. Uh, you know, there's experiments where all uh, there's a four-way uh, red light to give pedestrian an opportunity where you have the entire lane clear to give pedestrian the enti entire opportunity to do so. Let's experience that. Nothing should be taken off the table when it comes down to pedestrian uh, safety. Nothing should be taken off the table. Other questions? Thank you. Thank you.